Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the third, and I have a really exciting video for today. <laughs> so now a couple months ago, I did a video where I made a wreath, which was something that I had never done before. And I asked you for like ideas about the name of the series, and it was like kind of a contest. So since that happened, I have decided to go a slightly different way, but I'm really excited about it, and I think you will be too. So um, in the comment section of that video, one of my friends, Rhiannon, hi Rhiannon, um, was talking about how wreaths were like one of the first sort of like what I sort of perceived as like a folk craft where people could just gather sort of like whatever was around them and create, you know, these circles of um, plant material. And so that got me thinking like, I mean, a lot of the things that I am interested in as a knitter and sewer are sort of like adjacent or are in, of, in and of themselves folk crafts. I don't know that there's like if that's like a legitimate term, but it's sort of like these things that I perceive as sort of like, uh, like pagan, like adjacent. And um, so that's sort of the direction that I want the this like video series of me trying different crafts to go in. Um, so I'm going to be basically trying like things that I deem folk crafts, which is such a wide range of stuff and I think could be really fun. Um, it's sort of stuff that I have seen and I'm like, okay, like I would be interested in buying that from an artisan or making it myself just like to try it. So I'm talking like basket making, um, even like potentially herbal like remedies. Um, I think it's like a very wide range. So that's sort of the the uh, the avenue that we're going to go in from now on. So today's video, which I'm sure you have already seen because of the thumbnail and title, is going to be making a broom. Um, so I've definitely never made a broom before. Um, yeah, I, I'm just like really excited about it. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what's been going on make a broom while I'm at it, and then um, share with you a bunch of resources that I found um, both if you wanted to make your own broom, some instructions, where I got my materials, and also some like history about brooms, um, like some books that I found. So yeah, let me first go over the materials that I have gathered with me today. So I'm using this issue of Taproot. I'm like a longtime subscriber. I, when people ask me what it is, I usually describe it as kind of like a homesteader magazine. They have essays, but they also have DIY projects. So there's sometimes knitting projects in it or knitting patterns. Um, and this issue, which is the roots issue, which I must have gotten about six months ago now, um, has a little DIY project recipe of this broom. And so as I was doing research as to whether or not I wanted to do that type of broom or like a broom with a big handle, um, I like realized that there's more materials that that I would need if I was making one with like a big handle. So I decided to um, start off with this turkey tail one and I've already told my entire family they're getting brooms for the holidays. So I hope that um, this isn't terrible. <laughs> I've got my instruction booklet. I have also got my broom core, which is apparently a ugh, a type of sorghum flower. So this is what I got. So, so this is longer. This is what I could find easily um, online and that had like kind of a quick shipping time and wasn't colored. I really wanted like a natural color. 
and so sometimes in the tutorials, so this is like a single little piece of this broom core. Let's see if it'll focus for us. Yeah. So it's kind of got this like split end and then it's like just a piece. But when I saw people making the like bigger brooms, this was like still attached and it had a bunch of these on it. Like there's like a piece that comes out of the plant that like attaches all of them. Um, but for this specific type of broom, they didn't recommend it. So not using it. <laughs> um, this is a little longer than the Taproot magazine called for. Um, so I debated cutting it just to make it a little bit smaller, but, um, but I'm, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> So the other really important thing is the nylon thread that we like bind all of the broom core together with. And so that is, I bought a little pack again off of Amazon. Um, I got some different colors because you know, I want to use this one for my little broom. And sorry, they're in shiny wrapping. I didn't think about how that would reflect, but I've got my thread. So one of the most interesting things that I learned in doing like research and reading about how to sort of um, get set up to do it um, is that you need like a dowel or something to act as a spool. Um, so I saw like some really fancy ones and then I saw some people using like literally like a two by two piece of wood and I was going to use a log. I can't find my saw and I couldn't get a small enough piece before the rain started. So, and I was also like, I was like, I don't want to buy like a fancy spool. I don't know if I'm going to like this, blah, 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 blah. So I have this table that we bought off of Facebook Marketplace and we're not using it as our dining table. So I've been setting it up to do different things. It was on the, out on the deck for a while before the rain really picked up. Um, but I was like, what if... I use one of the table legs. So it's kind of perfect. <laughs> it's just a table leg. Um, there was like a little nail sticking out here, but I was able to just unscrew it. Um, and basically what this is, is I am going to wrap this around here and it will be like the spool, right? Of this thread. And then I can use, I can like put my feet on it. It'll sit on the floor and I can like hold it down to tighten it as I'm making the broom. This will all make sense in a moment. But, um, so that's what I decided to use because I didn't want to get anything sort of unnecessary. And I felt like I could definitely have a DIY spool of some kind. Um, and then lastly, I just have a pair of scissors for when I need those. So yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. I hope it turns out well, but I'm sure in the next video it'll be hanging up on my wall of goodies. Um, yeah. So the first things first, I'm going to wrap this around here and then I am going to measure out my broom core into little bundles because that's what it said to do. So let's do it. Okay, so I've wrapped my um, thread around my little dowel, and now I am getting my broom corn ready. But I wanted to measure it because they recommend um, 14 inch, and I mentioned that I know that this is longer. So let me just let me see. So this is like 20 inch. So I think I can just snip the ends off 
of six inches. And for this broom, they're only recommending four ounces. And I think I have a pound. So I'm gonna cut it in half, cut it into fourths, and then cut it, and then cut the fourth into 14 inch long <laughs> ones. So let me do that. Okay, I got my broom corn trimmed. Um, so initially I wasn't going to do that, but when I watched one of the other videos um, where she was using like a full length, like a 20 inch, it her broom was really big and I don't necessarily want a huge one right now. So that's why I decided to go through with it. It was a little weird to cut, kind of like when you're cutting too much hair at once. Or if you've never tried to give yourself a haircut, maybe you won't know what that is like. But <sighs> anyway, um, so I've got my broom and now I'm going to section it out into the different um, sort of clumps. They made like a really neat pile Oops. in ugh, the picture for the other one. So it looks like they're saying to do it in like quarters. So I'm gonna split it in half and then split both of those in half. And then I'm basically just gonna put them down on the table, sort of crisscrossed, so that I can see my piles and I can easily grab them. Not crisscross, yeah, crisscross, like perpendicular to one another. So there's one, two, also it smells so nice. It's like, just like, I don't know, it just smells like hay, I guess kind of a nice smell. Okay, so this is gonna be sort of my like foundational bit of uh, broom corn. <sighs> okay, I think it's starting. Usually, I like, I didn't look at any, I didn't look at anything to help when I was doing the wreath, but now I'm a little nervous. So we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna wing it, turkey wing it. <laughs> Okay, a duh. I've been wrapping it like the wrong way. It's fine. 
Okay, I'm going to take a break. I'm gonna undo this. And then I'm going to come back when I'm not hungry and try again. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I have undone the first broom. I have eaten very spicy chilaquiles. Um, and my lipstick like didn't budge while I was eating fried food. So like, forgot how good this lip stain is. It's from Sephora. It's like the Sephora brand matte lip stain. So very impressed. Okay, so it's so, interesting to me that like I can watch tutorials I am obviously using this book this magazine to help me do this okay but honestly those chilaquiles were so spicy that kind of had an out-of-body experience for a moment so my lips are a little bit still on fire I think I'll survive um so what am I saying okay so I can watch like all this stuff that I want, right? Like about broom making videos, I can read stuff. But like that mistake that I just made is gonna have like way more of an impact on me doing this going forward than like any video that I could watch. So yeah, I like kind of love that that just happened even though I, <clears throat> this video is now taking longer to film, but you know, it's fine. So, yeah, okay, so I undid the broom. Now I'm gonna start over. So basically what I did wrong is I started from the top and went down and I should have gone, and I should have gone <laughs> from the bottom up. Yeah, which now makes sense. Um, but it's just so interesting that I thought I knew how to do it. And you know, I'm just learning and I don't. So. That's what we're gonna do this time. Um, also, I really would prefer to make a slip knot. I just feel like that's gonna be more stable. Um, so, first pile, broom corn. And now I really wanna start it like lower than the other one. Oh, see, that's like sticking. Yeah, this is really it's just such a different tool to do but I'm also thinking about how like a lot of these crafts like when I was watching the video about doing the um, the broom with like a handle I was so interested by the fact that um, they there was like weaving involved in it and just thinking about how much a part of all of these crafts that um, textiles are, you know, even to just like have sh twine like this, and I'm sure that there could be, you know, different ways of embellishing it that sort of follow the line of, um, of textile work. So. Yeah, just thinking about that. Um, okay, so we're starting down here this time. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna move up as opposed to starting up here. We're gonna move up from this first point instead of starting up here and going down. So, let's do it.
Okay, well, that's such a bummer. <sighs> okay, hmm. Okay, so the string I was using, which I sort of knew was thin, but has been holding up really well, just snapped on me. <sighs> so what I'm gonna do with this broom is, hmm, might have to just go back one little section, secure the end, and then decide if I'm gonna continue or just leave it where it is. So. I, yeah, I just don't think that it is thick enough, so let me see, so see, this just snapped. So, not the end of the world, I will prevail, <laughs> although this broom is definitely a little more challenging than I thought it would be. Okay, so. I've secured that bit, but I really don't, I want it to be longer, bigger, so um, I am going to continue, but I'm just going to reattach the string and try and be more mindful about how tight I am pulling it, but look, I kind of have a broom-ish. I really do like the way it smells, just like hay, but... Okay, onward and upward. <sighs> this is definitely not in the instructions, so I am just again gonna make a slip knot and then secure it around. Can't believe I snapped it. I mean, I kind of can, but we'll definitely buy thicker twine ever if I ever do decide to do this again. Okay, I can just hide that there. Okay, all right. Oh, and I was holding it like this, which I do think was helpful. like the rest of my broom core is now all together, so I'm gonna re-divvy this up. So I'm holding my finger here so that I, that tension that I just did doesn't go away. I'm going to cut it, put it through this loop, and then pull it down, and that will be the end of that. So. So I just finished this first little bit of the broom. Now I'm gonna like kind of fuss with it and shape it and cut all the like ties 
but um, I'm pretty happy for, you know, having messed up a couple times, trying again, not giving up, and like having, you know, a broom. I think she's cute. Yeah, let me just fuss with her for a little bit and then I'll uh, talk more about this. Okay, so this is my little broom. Um, I mean, I, what a journey I just went on to make this broom. Um, I'm pretty excited just to like have tried this. And I think this one probably will go up on my wall as my very first attempt, but um, I'm kind of excited to experiment more with this, which I know I will do because I do plan on making some of these as Christmas presents um, this year. I just think even if people just hang them up on their wall, I think they're nice. Um, it was messier than I expected. I have so much, I'm like a little dreading how this is gonna go because I don't think that they'll easily get swept up <laughs> well, I have carpet, so I don't think they'll get vacuumed up super easily. Um, I do like that I use the pink thread, although I will also, well, I'll finish the thread that I bought if I were doing it, like, super extended more in the future. Then I think I would get thicker thread just because of it breaking. I think it'll be fine but it feels like pretty secure. Um, so yeah, I'm not too worried about that. So yeah, overall, like what a cool little like project. Um, yeah, it's also perfect because Halloween is this weekend here. I mean it everywhere, but like in the time of recording this video, this weekend is Halloween. So very witchy, witchy vibes going on. So yeah, I definitely, when I was record, when I like was thinking about recording this, I thought I would be doing more talking to the camera, but I was like very mesmerized by the process, which I think like a lot of these crafts will probably um, do to me. Um, but yeah, what a fun, what a fun project. Um, yeah, I, I really hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me. I hope you're as excited about this series as I am. Um, if you have any ideas for folk crafts, um, it, very broad term kind of doesn't mean anything, I possibly made it up, <laughs> then please leave a comment down below about what you'd like me to do next. Even if it's stuff that I've already done, even if it's textile based, um, I just think that, I think that it will be really fun kind of exploring these in a modern setting, you know, using pink, <laughs> pink threads, whatever. But yeah, I'm having a really good time like thinking about these and I had a really good time doing this. Um, and I learned a lot doing it, which is really nice. Um, if I have inspired you to try making your own broom, again, I have all the details listed down below. They are affiliate links, so I'd be really grateful um, if you decided to shop through there. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Like this video. If you're new here, please subscribe. Um, I do a lot of knitting content, but also other general crafty DIY stuff. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.